Something New's very first live stream concert. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Hi, everybody. I hope you can see and hear us. Um, I'm here with so many wonderful friends who have helped make this podcast season such a success. Um, so I'm really, really excited to, to share and revisit the songs that happened this season. Let me tell you what this is So uh, and what Something New is. Uh, in case this is somehow you stumbled upon this concert and you don't know, uh, Something New is a musical theater podcast that I started four years ago uh, where I interview an artist in our community who's chosen to wear multiple hats and wear them with pride. Uh, and then we premiere a brand new song from something I've been working on and we have fun. Uh, let's see, at the end of each season, I produce a concert to celebrate all the terrific guests I've had the pleasure of not only getting to know a little better, uh, but also all the songs that I've written uh, with and for them. Uh, the concerts have been at the Triad, the Duplex, Fine Times 54 Below. I mean, how do you top that? Well, first, we're, we're not going to start at 1130 anymore. Um, <laughs> and second, um, you know, they say go big or go home. And since big wasn't in the budget, uh, we're going home into your home. Yeah. See, what, see what I did there? <laughs> Thanks to live stream technology, uh, people are getting the chance to see live events, operas, concerts, apparently sports, in a whole new way across the world, and often at a fraction of the price, including this, which is free. Um, while there's nothing better than being in the room where it happens. Um, uh, uh, live, live stream is like a new, it's a new tool that more and more theater producers are using, and I'm happy to be giving this a try myself. Uh, so thanks for everyone for joining in this experiment. Great. Uh, speaking of us, we've got, um, I think, nine, not, I definitely know they're terrific, but I think nine <laughs> singers <laughs> from season four uh, singing 12 songs uh, from the season plus a brand new premiere at the end, so don't go away. Um, and let's see, and in theater they always say, you know, take your phone, turn your phones off, but in this case, your home, I don't know if your phone's going to ring, keep your phones on. Uh, make sure you're also signed into Twitter. Um, and you're following me. There's also a list of my guests' handles, so you can follow all of them, um, so you should, if you so choose. Um, let's see, we've also taken over Broadway World on Instagram, like right now. So if you go onto uh, Instagram, uh, Broadway World's uh, handle, which is Official Broadway World, uh, they are going to be taking uh, exclusive photos throughout the evening, so that's super fun. Uh, use the hashtag Something New Finale, that's the hashtag of the evening. And um, as we go, um, here we go. Um, I'm going to introduce our pianist. You guys ready? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please give me a warm welcome round of applause for Gillian Berkowitz. Yeah. The, first hug, the first hug of Mindy. <laughs> um, Gillian, if you don't know her and you should, has performed piano, keyboard, accordion, and vocals in over 25 Broadway and off-Broadway shows. Yeah. She's a very, very fancy lady. And I'm so happy to have her. Lucky how are to be here. How you doing? Doing great. Yeah. Always great when I'm playing your music. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to that part, shall we? Um, I'm going to introduce my first guest. Uh, please welcome um, from the original production of Spring Awakening, and who can currently be seen and heard on NBC's The Voice. We have Gabe Violet. <laughs> Gabe's going to be singing The Corpse Danced at Midnight, um, which I wrote for him, and it's the first song on the Cabot Cove EP, which we'll talk about later, um, but I'm just going to let you do it. Cool. All right, cool. Thank you. <laughs> the corpse had a dead-end job that suited her fine. She sat at a desk. Started at nine. The corpse had a living bow. It wasn't that great. Yeah. 
tonight, here's some fun stats, at least nerdy and fun for me. Um, we have nearly 42,000 downloads in this podcast history, which feels really, which is pretty cool. Um, we'll have 78 episodes, and at least that many songs have premiered on this show. 78. Um, 89 singers have appeared on this show. 89 singers. Um, produced six concerts. Um, we kickstarted my very first album, Cabot Cove, which is now being released on Broadway Records. <laughs> nutty, nutty. I can't wait to tell you more about that. Uh, before I bring on uh, our, our second singer, oh, she's so good. Um, I also wanted to send out a special shout out to uh, to my cousin Debbie, who um, <laughs> who was the uh, the top backer of the Cabot Cove EP Aww. for the Kickstarter campaign. So uh, hashtag thanks Debbie. So, <laughs> so please add that hashtag to your mix. And um, speaking of mixing and belting, um, Amy Jo Jackson. <laughs> I just came up with that on the spot. It was genius. <laughs> You're a genius. Uh, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Amy Jo is going to sing um, a new song from my musical Mackenzie and the Missing Boy, which is called Tell Me a Story. And this is this show is set in the 1930s. It's very melodrama meets noir meets meets mystery. And this is uh, Mackenzie's "I Want" song essentially. Like in the first scene, she gets arrested, and um, you know because she was in a speakeasy, she comes back 13 years later. She doesn't know where her teenage son is. She just ran into her sister for the first time, who's a nun now, and like they're and she wants nothing to do with Mackenzie because you know she's Mackenzie, but. Mackenzie also has this really magical ability to uh, convince people uh, that her stories are true. So it's kind of like a modern-ish day Scheherazade. Um, so yeah, that sounds like fun. If you want to workshop this show, <laughs> it's available. Um, cool, I'm going to let you take it away. Great. Cool. Thank you. Who raised me must have 
of the lovely Lauren Soa. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> you started that applause. I love it. I love it. If you don't start your own applause, who the hell is going to start your applause? <laughs> 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 um, I'm just, I'm just going to let this one happen. Great. Wow. 
Uh, my best friend Liz is overseeing all things social media. And um, have we gotten any tweets or anything? Um, we have a lot of retweets. Lots of retweets, lot of guys. Likes. And lots of likes. Lots of retweets. Um, someone named Leah K. New, who I think is from oh, Lake Nicole. Leah K. New. Um, so oh. today she was excited that there's some McKenzie in this, and she did adopt the hashtag Thank You Becky. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
hope French people are watching. Um, <laughs> uh, so it's uh, Le Café de Nuit, maybe? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Right, right. Thanks, France. Um, <laughs> oh my god, we're on a roll. Um, what did I want to say? Oh, I want to thank, I have more organizations to thank. I want to thank the Dramatist Guild Fund for housing, housing us, hosting and housing yeah. us today. The Dramatist Guild Fund. <laughs> Especially my friends Seth and Tessa, who have been my pretty much daily contacts. Um, when I reached out to them earlier uh, in the season saying, hey, I need a place to do my podcast, can, can I do it here? And they said yes, uh, which is an amazing, it's amazing to hear yes, isn't it? And from an organization that I'm a proud member of the Dramatist Guild, and for the Dramatist Guild Fund to give so generously of their space to yeah. writers, a beautiful space. This is Aaron Sinclair's piano. Yeah. Um, like this is a really, really cool thing, and I'm very, very grateful for the generosity. In case you don't know, the Dramatist Guild Fund is the public charity arm of the Dramatist Guild of America, of which I'm a proud member. Uh, its mission is to aid and nurture writers for the theater, to fund nonprofit theaters producing contemporary American works, and to heighten awareness, appreciation, and support of theater across the country. Uh, thanks to the generous support of Carol Hall and the Grisham Foundation, this music hall uh, provides free space for writers to create and present their work, just like we're doing tonight. Uh, to find out how you can get involved and support DGF, just visit dgfund.org. So, thank you, DGF. Um, I want to bring up my next singer, which is the lovely Catherine Pettit. Thank you. 
back to Liz, our, um, our uh, correspondent. Um, Robert Rode, MD, going to the awesome job bar. Yeah! It's hey. hey. a guard <laughs> shout out. <laughs> Any others? Um, Any? The Set List Podcast, because David's bone is gorgeous. Aww. And everything is amazing. All good. Great, <laughs> great. Thank you for not reading the other two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring out uh, my next singer. This is Tim Elliott. Tim is going to sing a song that um, that I originally wrote for Michael Cassera. Um, Michael Cassera, I hope you're watching. Um, if you don't know who Michael Cassera is, then that's crazy. Um, he is a casting director and, uh, and a very good friend of mine, and I was very lucky and to get him to do the show. And um, I'm lucky to, to share his song uh, because of Tim Elliott. So uh, this, this, uh, this is Tim. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> Too big, you're too tall. You just ain't my type. You're too blonde, too brunette. You're too, well, I forget. You just ain't my type. Look, and I'm sorry, them's the breaks. I gotta go with my gut. I could call you back, but we both know you lack what it takes to make the So this is the fifth song that I wrote for the album, 
and I was looking forward to writing this song the m- because like the dead must sing it sounds very literal right a little on the nose and I was like thanks well we texted about it a bit we did we're both we big did. British 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 just a so. little bit yeah. just a bit yeah. Um, so yeah so we, we texted and I knew that she would be singing it on the show and um, I was really surprised by the direction the song went um, but I'm, I'm really proud of it and I, I love that you sing it you're welcome <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> All right, um, this is Amy Jo Jackson, The Dead Must Sing. Thank you. 
feel like a coach or something. <laughs> if I if I understood sports. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be on the right show. No. 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 Sorry. Um, another thing I love about Amy Jo is that we sing in the same key. <laughs> <laughs>
might say to all be a stranger.
Oh my god, seriously? <laughs> so many I'm choosing on the day. This is not how the scene was initially 